This episode is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the mythical series Analog Interconnects. Click the link in the show notes for more information. So last year, we took a look at a little dinky stand mount loudspeaker from Monitor Audio. It's called the Silver 57G. And I think I called that video as the, the speaker being for, what was it? tight corners and small rooms, or small rooms and tight corners. But in the comments section, there were many, many calls for us to take a look at the bigger brother, the 107G. Now, I was just about to put in a request after that review for a pair of Silver 107G. When we got just close to Munich in May, a monitor audio announced that they would be producing a 50th anniversary edition of the Silver 107G. I'm just going to call it the Silver 100 from now on because it's too much of a mouthful. And this limited edition would come in a special finish. I think they call it Classic Heritage Green. But the catch was that they wouldn't be available until the autumn. So I would have to wait until then to get my hands on a pair. And now here we are. In describing this loudspeaker in both its design, its looks, its build quality, its sound quality, I'm going to be conducting ongoing side-by-side -side comparisons, side-by-side -side comparisons to the Sonus Faber Lumina 2 and the speaker that we reviewed recently, the Q Acoustics Concept 30. And if you're wondering, John, why no Kef LS50 Meta? There just wasn't the time to do a third side-by-side -side comparison. Very sorry. Now, the most obvious difference between the Sonus Faber, the Q Acoustics, and this new Monitor Audio Silver 107G. I said I wouldn't say that, but I just did. <laughs> the, the most obvious difference is that the Monitor Audio is a bigger loudspeaker. But its sort of build and fit and finish is closer to the Sonus Faber than it is to the Q Acoustics because the Q Acoustics has more of a sort of a Futurefy vibe to it. And I think even in the sort of classic heritage green or racing green or whatever it is, the monitor audio has, yeah, just more of a traditional loudspeaker vibe, which I think will appeal to many, many of you. But I gotta say that the magnetically attachable grills that come with the monitor audio, I think look awful. I don't say this often about grills, but they are awful. That rounded bottom, I know it's been around for many years with monitor audio speakers, I just cannot stand the look of it. And when you have gold drivers like these, I think you want them to sort of pop out. I think they add to the look of this piece of audio furniture. Let's never forget, the loudspeakers are audio furniture. So this is a two-way design, like the Sonus Faber, like the Q Acoustics. But in the monitor audio, we have a one inch or 25 millimeter tweeter, it's something called CCAM, it's a gold dome. And that tweeter sits in a waveguide that also doubles as a protector from the inquisitive fingers of the small people. Maybe you have small people. I don't have small people here, but maybe you do. And they, you know, they wanna poke the tweeter in, don't they? So I think having a protected tweeter is a very, I think it's an important feature for people with young families, I really do. And then because we have a bigger cabinet, we have a bigger mid bass driver. 20 centimeters. This is also a C-cam driver. I think Monitor Audio called it an RST2. So it, that's the, the big sort of gold looking mid bass driver. There's a nice sort of dimpled texture to it. I'm not sure what that does. And if you wanna know what C-cam is, then I'll put a link in the description box below so you can read up on it. The reflex port is on the back of the speaker. So too are the binding posts, obviously. But once again, we get two sets of binding posts for by amping and by wiring if that's your thing. It's not mine, but it might be yours. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's not mess about here. Because this is a bigger speaker with a bigger mid-bass driver, this monitor audio kicks harder in the low end than the Q Acoustics and the Sonus Faber. It goes lower. I think monitor audio rate this loudspeaker as being 6 dB down at 35 Hertz. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means as you look at it, the frequency response would be like, here's the treble up here and we're gonna be, well, it might do a bit of a wiggle, reasonably flat, and then the bass would sort of roll off like this. Now, if we consider this part here, the sort of flat part as zero dB, then six dB down is like where we come down six dB on the logarithmic scale. So it's roughly here, and that would correlate with a 35 Hertz frequency. So let's consider what this means for us as music listeners, as music fans. So I've got an album called Never Mind the Distortion. It's a remix album of tracks by I think a Japanese artist called Nav Katsu. And the last track is a remix of Wild Horses by one of my favorite electronic artists of all time, Global Communication. And the thing is with that track, even though it's very ambient and it's kind of like a woozy sort of fever dream of a piece of music, it has some very occasional low bass notes, which the Q Acoustics, well, they kind of miss them really. I mean, they give us a suggestion uh, that they might be there, same with the Sonus Faber, but they are fully present with the monitor audio, silver 107G 50th anniversary limited edition. Yeah, this limited edition is because monitor audio are this year celebrating their 50th anniversary, just like me. Let's just pause for a moment because I've got another recommended, well, this is a song, not an album, and it's actually by Barry Adamson again, because I'd completely forgotten about this until I'd started digging into Adamson's back catalogue on the back of last week's recommendation for Oedipus Schmidibus. Now, this is a song that I think audiophiles will go nuts for. And basically, if they don't, <laughs> then I don't know audiophiles. I mean, it's in the title, really. This is a song from 98, so a couple of years after Oedipus Schmidipus, and it is called Jazz Devil. And it is, it's a bit jazzy. It's got a swing to it. It's got Adamson's baritone vocal singing a song about, yeah, being a jazz devil. It's witty, it's sharp, and it's, yeah, it's kind of fun to listen to. But yeah, this is catnip for audiophiles. I really believe this. Back to the monitor audio. Would they benefit from a subwoofer? Absolutely, no doubt about it. Did I use a subwoofer with them? Nope, not at all. Because unlike the Sonus Faber and the Q Acoustics, once I'd finished my review listening for the day, with those speakers, I reconnected a sub. With the monitor audio, I didn't do that. I just left them no sub, and I just enjoyed them as they were doing what they do down to, you know, into the sort of mid 30s in terms of bass frequencies. And perhaps this larger mid-bass driver is why the monitor audio sound tonally truer than the Q Acoustics loudspeakers. I'm not so sure about the Sonos Fabers. Again, haven't quite worked that out. That, that speaker is such a chameleon and it's, it's really hard to sort of pin down. But it's clear to me that tonality of, I was noticing some toms, I can't remember which track, but they just seem to come across with just, yeah, a truer tonality through the monitor audio than the Q Acoustics. And that mid-bass driver also lends a greater sense of openness to the mid-range than the Q Acoustics. The Q Acoustics sound relatively pinched in the mid-range compared to the monitor audio. And I hear that with listening to some really, I guess I'd call it vintage Mark Eitzel from, I think it was the, the late 80s. It's a live album, him just playing with an acoustic guitar. I think it's called Songs of Love, live. It sounds a bit dated now, but yeah, I think the monitor audio just give me a better look at, you know, what's going on with the acoustic guitar, with Eitzel's vocals, and also with the sort of, the hall ambience.
The only area in which I prefer the Q Acoustics and even more so the Sonus Faber is on image specificity. That's where the sort of player outlines are drawn more crisply by the smaller stand mounts than the, the larger monitor audio. And that means that the Silver 100 7G, they sound a bit diffuse when compared to, side by side that is, the Q Acoustics and the Sonus Faber. And in fact, in the monitor audio's treble, we kind of hear the middle ground between the Q Acoustics sort of laid back smoothness and the, the Sonus Faber's sizzle and get up and go. And that has implications for the amplifier we choose because with the Q Acoustics loudspeaker, I definitely prefer the, the Blue Sound Power Node Edge that we just covered, both sonically and visually. But I didn't really find that with the monitor audio. I thought that the, the edge was a little bit sort of lacking in the fullness of the low end. I think the larger driver here needs greater control and the Silver 100 don't really need the extra pep up top that the Power Node Edge gives us. So the amplifier that I landed on as I kind of what I consider to be a better dancing partner with the monitor audio, this choice will surprise you. It is the Audio Lab 6000A Play, which gives us 50 watts per channel into A times. So a little bit more, but it's class AB. But I didn't use the play portion of this amplifier. Oh no, no way. In order to mirror the functionality of the Blue Sound Power Node Edge, I added a Blue Sound node to the Audio Lab. And this Audio Lab and node combination gives me just the right balance with the monitor audio of sort of that lean in excitement from music, but also lean back relaxation. And I'm thinking specifically here of the, the I guess the comparatively weak sounding original master of REM's I Remember California. However, we should really acknowledge here that the Audio Lab with the Blue Sound node sells for twice as much as the Power Node Edge. Even better for me though, with the monitor audio compared to the Sonus Faber and the Q Acoustics, are its talents with macro dynamics. This is a much more exciting loudspeaker. Now this has two implications for our listening in that, number one, the monitor audio come alive much lower on the volume dial. We don't need to crank the, the volume so hard to bring them to life. Remember how I said that with the Concept 30, that's what I had to do to really bring the best out of them. Don't have to do that as much with the Silver 107G. And therefore, if we want to listen quietly in the evenings, especially to TV, then I would absolutely, no doubt about it, choose the monitor audio of the three speakers that I'm considering today. But best of all, the monitor audio Silver 107G deliver the scale, the bass, and the macro dynamics that I really enjoy from them with seemingly more effortlessness. Remember how I said in my Q Acoustics Concept 30 video that floor standers seem to have this ability as well, to sound more effortless in their delivery of scale and bass and dynamics. I think the larger cabinet, the larger mid-bass driver in the monitor audio also helps in that department here. So for me, sound-wise, I guess and visually as well, the, the monitor audio is sort of the middle ground between a full-size floor stander and a little pint-size stand mount. And I would absolutely pick this loudspeaker over the Sonus Faber, the Concept 30 from Q Acoustics, and possibly even the Kef LS50 Meta, but I say that with reservations that I haven't really done side-by-side -side comparisons to that. But I would pick them not because I prefer the monitor audio in isolation, but because I think it's a better fit for this room than those sort of pint sized stand mounts. I still think that if you've got a much smaller room than this, this one's six meters by five meters, if your room is smaller, 
then you want a pint size stand mount. But if you've got this kind of room or a bit bigger, then monitor audio all the way. So make no mistake, I think that the monitor audio, silver, 100, 7G, 50th anniversary edition finish is a, to borrow a phrase from the UK, a bloody brilliant loudspeaker. I think it's utterly fantastic, I really do. It's the same price as the Sonos Faber, the Kef, the Q Acoustics. Yeah, and for this room, I would pick the monitor audio over all of them. For my bedroom upstairs, I wouldn't put these monitor audio in there. I think the speaker is a little bit too big for that space. It's a little bit smaller up there. So you really have to factor in the size, the dimensions of your room when picking a loudspeaker, even when you're choosing a stand mount. But yeah, I can't say enough good things about this monitor audio loudspeaker for the money. And I love the racing green finish. I love it. And I've got to say, I really am not keen to send these back to the UK to monitor audio. So maybe they'll have to just send me an invoice instead. Anyway, if you like this video, if you like the fact that I sort of weaved side by side comparisons throughout the entire thing, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards hi-fi, high-end audio, audio file stuff, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. And that means it would be kind of easy, if you're not careful, or if you have little people, to knock the speaker off these stands. But I can tell you that that has never ever happened in this house, has it Olaf? Never, not yeah, once. Nobody yeah. has ever knocked a speaker off a stand, have they, Olaf? No. no, no, no.